This is Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News with another video in the series of our imaging of the pituitary. Today I'm showing you an example of a patient with a large Rathke's cleft cyst. That's my presumptive diagnosis anyways. And as usual, when we're looking at the coronal views, we look for the carotid siphon. It's a turn in the carotid artery that if you cut across that, you're gonna see the upper part of the turn and the lower part of the turn here and here. So you find the carotid siphon on both sides. See how it's asymmetric. It's different on this side compared to this side. That's typical. The pituitary should be there. <clears throat> Here's the sphenoid sinus. Air looks black, flowing blood looks black. So you can see blood vessels here that are black. This is spinal fluid, brain tissue. And instead of a pituitary gland, now this patient presented with a visual loss. Um, instead of a pituitary gland, what we see is this structure that I'm outlining. It's fluid filled. The fluid's about the same density as spinal fluid. It's not spinal fluid. This is Rathke's cleft cyst fluid. And you can see this cyst fills the entire cella, which is here, and extends supracellularly, which means above the cella, and has this little tiny enhancing hat on the top. This little hat is what's left of the patient's pituitary gland. Maybe a little bit over here, but the pituitary is thinned and elevated by this cyst. Here's pituitary as well. Here's the cyst. Arteries. You can see a little piece of tissue here and a little piece of tissue here. These are the optic nerves. This is the optic chiasm. So this lesion is in contact with the optic chiasm. It has elevated it, stretched it thinned out the blood vessels that supply it and has led to visual compromise for this particular patient. Now it's often useful to look at the sagittal views as well. And again, as I've talked about other films, we find the mid-sagittal section and you can find that by looking for the cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius, which is here, fourth ventricle. This is the inside of the third ventricle. This is the inner peduncular cistern, some of the supracellar cisterns of spinal fluid. Here's the sphenoid sinus, and here's the cella, which is deformed by this structure that I'm outlining. And you can see here it's a cyst. This is the normal pituitary shoved upwards, maybe a little bit of it down here as well. This is certainly the pituitary stalk. This may be the gland here and this may be the stalk enhancing here. It's hard to say, surgeon will know when he gets in there. This patient also had uh, absence of pituitary function as a result of this lesion. Now I call this a Rathke's cleft cyst. That's the most likely diagnosis. It may be an arachnoid cyst, which is a little bit of a different entity. The arachnoid membranes are the membranes that surround the brain and can also uh, in, invaginate into the cell and cause a similar finding. But um, I think looking at the sagittal section, I would correct myself earlier. I think the anterior pituitary is shoved forward, not upwards. And I think this is just the pituitary stalk thinned out, coursing over the top of this cyst. It is probably this pituitary stalk thinning and compression and dysfunction and the compression of the normal gland here that has led to the hypopituitarism in this particular patient. <clears throat> so I'll call this a Rathke's cleft cyst. I think it's a very good example of a cyst that uh, has enlarged to become supracellular and to cause problems with hormone secretion. We often see patients with Rathke cysts. They're said to occur in about 2% of all MRI studies. Uh, we pay attention to them if they're over a centimeter in size or if they're smaller or causing headaches or and causing headaches. Uh, but we also pay particular attention to those that are associated with hypopituitarism. 
In our experience, Rathke cysts that are smaller than this associated with hypopituitarism are often inflamed or infected. Uh, but once a cyst gets this large and affects the pituitary stalk, you can see the hypopituitarism without the inflammation. So this patient requires transphenoidal surgery to uh, resect this particular lesion. All right, once again, Dr. Lewis Blevins uh, with a great example of a Rathke's cleft cyst that has extended into the supracellar region, causing visual compromise and also causing hypopituitarism.